Okay, let's go ahead and start up on our lesson three practice problems. For number one, what we have is that Diego measured the diameter and circumference of several circular objects and recorded his measurements in the table. All right, so we've got a half dollar coin, flying disc, also known as a Frisbee, but that's a brand name, jar lid, and a flower pot. All right, so we've got those things there, and Diego measured the diameter and circumference of several circular objects. Now, uh, this one relies on what we learned during your lesson, all right? And um, one of the things that we learned was that um, when we compared circumference to diameter, you know, when you guys did that, when you compared circumference to diameter, you got something that resembled pi. You remember that? Remember that? We got something that resembled pi. So, um, and that was, that's the constant proportionality that we're going to use there. So when we did circumference, okay, because that's like our y, and we compared that to our diameter, that is like our x, we got something kind of close to 3.14, right? We got something pretty close to that. I, I think when we were measuring things, you know, in class, some of us might have got something a little bit over that, some of us got way under, depending on how badly we measured. But a lot of you guys were pretty right on. That was pretty good. Um, but yeah, we should get 3.14. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do. We're going to do that. We're going to do, you know, 10 divided by 3. 10 divided by 3 is um, 3 and one third. I'm going to put 3.3 repeating. Okay. Uh, 28 divided by 23. That's going to be like one point something. And that should tell you everything you need to know. So 28 divided by 23 is 1.217. All right, I'm not going to write all the decimals, but 1.217. And it keeps going. All right, and then we do 25 divided by 8. 25 divided by 8 is going to be 3 and 1 eighth. So that's going to be like 3.217. One two five, and then we're going to do 48 divided by 15. So 48 divided by 15. I got 3.2. Exactly. All right. So now the question here is, you know, uh, one of his measurements is inaccurate. One of them is inaccurate. Which measurement is it? Explain how you know. So there's one of them that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. You guys see it? One of them that sticks out like a sore thumb is this one right here. This one is unlike the others. All the other ones are three something. 3.3, 3.1, 3.2. All are pretty close to pi. 3.14. 159, 265, 358, 979, 3, 2, 3, It goes on and on. So, uh, 1.217, that is going to be it, okay? So I would say it's a flying disc. And I'm going to refer to this as a constant proportionality. Because, I mean, we're really not supposed to think of it as pi yet, although we did talk about it. But the, the flying disc, because it's constant was different than the other three. Not just a little bit different, it was a lot different. You know, it was like half, less than half. All right, for number two. For number two, complete the table, use one of the approximate values for pi discussed in class. All right, so for example, we could use 3.14, we can use 22 sevenths, we can use 3.14156. You can also, you know, on your calculators, you have a pi button, you know, that's, that gives you pi. So it really doesn't matter. Or you can just keep it, you can keep it in terms of pi as well. You can just keep it in terms of pi. Now, circumference is 
circumference is pi times diameter. That's what that is, pi times diameter. So one way we can do this is, is if we just keep it in terms of pi. We can just, you know, uh, for the hula hoop, we could just write that as 35 pi. It's kind of a weird way to write it, but if you just leave pi as pi, you know, like you would leave it like a variable. But pi is not a variable. It's a constant. It's a mathematical, mathematical constant. But um, it's like almost like writing it as like 35x. But uh, 35 pi is good. All right. Now for the circular pond, uh, for the circular pond, we got 556. 556. And that's the circumference. The circumference is 556. So I'm going to write this like an equation. Let me do that. I'm going to do uh, 556 equals pi times diameter. Okay, so 3.14 times some number is 556. So this one is just asking us, it's begging us to divide. So 556 divided by 3.14. And I do that, I get 177. And I'm rounding, by the way. So 177. So it's about 177. And that's feet. Okay, I should have wrote inches on this one, by the way. All right, uh, magnifying glass. We got 5.2. 5.2, uh, and I don't know, for that one we could do now 5. 5 and 2 tenths, I just said it, is that as a mixed number, right? 5 and 2 tenths, which, you know, if you change it into improper, that's 52 tenths. And then if you reduce it, which makes it easier to deal with, you get 26 fifths. All right, so 26 fifths. So where am I leading with this? I'm going to use a fraction. So I'm going to do 26 fifths and then multiply that by the fraction equivalent for pi. So 22, um, 22 sevenths, you know, which, you know, doesn't work out perfectly, but what the hey, let's do that. So you got 26 times 22 is 572. And then 5 times 7 is 35. And then 572 divided by 35. is 16. So I'm going to write this as a mixed number. So I got 16 times 35 is 560. So I got 12 left over. So there, there's your mixed number. So 16 and 12 35ths. Centimeters. Your favorite way to write an answer, right? In fraction form, using fractions. That's probably the best way to do it. Not always for everybody, but it works. It works. All right. And then for the car tire, I'm just going to divide that by 3.14. So 71.6 divided by 3.14. That, that's around 22. It's like 22.8. Let's write that down. 22.8 inches. For number three, it says uh, A is the center of the circle, and the length CD is 15. All right, so length segment CD is 15. Name a segment that is a radius. How long is it? All right, there's a, there's a number of radius here. All right, that's a radius, you know. Right there, that's a radius. Right there, that's a radius. There's radius all over the place. You throw a rock, you're going to hit a radius. See? Right there, that's a radius. And let me just, while I'm at it, just finish this up. There's another radius. I ran out of colors there to use. But just name a segment that's radius? Whatever. And let me just go ahead and just write them all down. What the hey? Let's do that. So if you wrote CA, good on you. All right? If you wrote E A. You're in the game. Uh, if you wrote G A, you 
good. Uh, we've got BA. And those, we can totally switch around those letters. We can make it AC, AE, AG, AB. You know, it's all good. It's all good. So then we got DA. All right, so those are all radii right there. Those are all radii. All right, um, and it's the next question here is how long is it? How long is it? Well, radius is half the diameter. So the half of 15 is 7.5. So that's going to equal 7.5, 7 and a half centimeters. Name a segment that is a diameter. Well, what the heck? That's, I mean, it tells you what the diameter is right here. CD. But, so let's go ahead. And then there's only one diameter here. There's not like, there was a whole bunch of radii, but there's only one diameter, and that's CD or DC. All right, how long is that? Uh, I guess it's 15. Why? Because it tells us. You know, but um, I mean, it, it doesn't say directly. It doesn't say, hey, this is a diameter, but if it goes through the middle, the endpoints around the circle, it's a diameter. All right, I think we're finished with that one. Number four, uh, A, consider the equation y equals 1.5x plus 2. Find four pairs of x and y values that make the equation true. Plot points x and y on the coordinate plane. I know these are a lot of words, you know, these are, sometimes get a little bit intimidating, uh, and maybe kind of overwhelming with all the, all the verbiage here, but um, what we just need to do is we need to find some inputs and outputs, that's what we got to do. So that is what we're going to do. So I'm going to make a table up, so I'm going to make an input-output table, X and Y, and it says we need four pairs, okay? So I'm going to give myself four spots for four pairs. All right. Now the equation, the equation, I know it looks complicated. Y equals 1.5x plus 2 is going to help us figure out what we can put in. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to put some numbers in here. I'm going to, I'm going to say, what, what if x is 0? What if? All right, now this is not always totally obvious to everybody, but you know, these are independent values, and these are dependent, typically. Those are dependent values. Meaning like the independent values, we can just make them up, uh, especially the way that this, um, this particular equation is written. We can just make it up. And so we can just write well, zero. And so that's easy to do. So I'm going to do, do the math over here so just to keep things kind of neat. So I'm going to do 1.5 times zero plus two. And whatever that comes out to is going to be y. So 1.5 times zero is zero. Zero plus two is two. So there it is. There it is, so that's two. So, we got a point, zero, two. Zero, two, where is zero, two? Well, that's zero on the x, two on the y. So that's right there. There's zero, by the way. That's our first point. All right, and then I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna avoid kind of thinking ahead here, but I'm going to avoid getting a decimal. So I'm going to use an even number for x this time around. This even number, so I'm going to use 2. I'm going to use 2. So that's our independent variable. So we're going to do 1.5 times 2 plus 2. So 1.5 times 2 is 3. That's 3.0, right? Plus 2 makes 5. So there's your next order pair, 2, 5. So that's 2 on the x, and we're, oh man, there's no 5 on here. There's no 5. Yes, there is. It's, we have to, it's inferred that it's between 4 and 5. So that's going to, you know, we can pretend there's a 5 there. It probably is right around there. So I'm going to put a point right there. That's 2, 5, okay? That's 2, 5. All right, and let's keep doing that. I'm going to do, let's do four. 
Let's do that. It's got four. Use that for x. Move this stuff around here. So one point five times four plus two. So one point five times four is six. Right? That's six. And six plus two is eight. Alright. So there you go, there's your other value. So we got um, four and that's gonna be eight. Oh I didn't graph did I graph it? I really didn't. I did, oh I kinda did, I didn't really put it down. But two five is right here. All right, and then four eight is right there. It's four on the X. Eight on the Y, and um, uh, we need one more pair. So let's do six. Let's do six this time around. Let's use that as our independent variable, our x, and we're going to do one point five times six plus two. One point five times six plus two. And then 1.5 times 6, um, that is 9, isn't it? That is 9. And so 9 plus 2 is 11. So there we go. We've got 6, 11. 6, 11. That's your last ordered pair right there. And then 6, 11. That's going to be 6 on the x and 11 on the y. So 11 is going to be halfway between 10 and 12. So that is right there. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So I'm gonna put a dot right there. Alrighty, already we got it. Okay, now I'm gonna make a, make a line through it. And based on the next question, uh, it says based on the graph. Can this be a proportional relationship? Why or why not? Well, I don't see why not, right? Why not? Because why? Because we said so. No, that's not a good enough reason. That's terrible reasoning. So, um, you know, our, the mathematics that we've learned so far in this, in, in this series, you know, using this curriculum, we've learned that uh, proportional relationships are linear. All right, well, this is definitely linear. All right, we could draw a line through the points. All these, all these points are collinear. All right, and if that's what proportional was, then it's proportional. But that's not all that it has to be. It has to start at the origin as well. Now this one does not begin at the origin. It does not. It does not begin there. So, um, you know, it, let's see if I can move it. Oh yeah, I can. But if it, if it was like that, I moved to the origin. But now it's no longer going through those original points. So I just messed up the problem. So it, it's got to go through the origin. Got to go through the origin. So this is not proportional. And the reason is simple. The reason is simple. Not proportional because it does not go through the origin. It has to go through that origin. And that does it for this lesson.